Hi everyone, Victor here again. And in today's lesson, we're going to continue from our previous lesson. And we're going to be looking at how to set permissions and manage permissions in OpenShift cluster with examples. So we're going to be performing the following operations. And one of the operations is one, we need to make sure that the non-cluster admin users are unable to create project and of course if you can't create project you can't create object basically no project no object because your object will be under a project and after doing this we are also going to test to see if our configurations was successful usually the self-provisional role means that users are able to self-provision or create project and object so this is the rule that we're going to target so let's see which user or what group is bound to this rule and to do that we can use the command oc describe cluster rule binding self provisional so you can do this you, you can only do this as the cluster admin so if you look at this you can see that this role is bound to this group system authenticated auth group so that's what this self provisioners role is bound to and you can also use this command just like as we did in the previous lesson you can also use this command to check which role an object is bound to so you can see that this role is bound to this group system authenticated oauth group so now that we know the group that is bound to this role we need to unbind the group from this role and we can do that by using the command oc adm policy so you're doing this as the cluster admin and that's why you're using the oc adm policy command so we're going to say remove cluster role from from group self provisioner system so the name of the group is system authenticated oauth unable to find target system authenticated or authenticated authenticated So you can see here that it's saying that this role has been removed from this group. If I do OC describe cluster role binding, cluster role binding, so you can see that this is not found. And if I also do this command as well, is this command again yes yeah, self provisional you can see that we don't have the group bound to this self provisional rule any longer so let's just do our test and see if any non cluster admin user can create project so I have the user Lisa so I'm just going to log in as the user Lisa This is password. This is password. So if I do OC new project, let's just say test project. You can see that we have an error which says error from server forbidding. You may not request you may not request a new project via this api and that's because we have 
removed the self provisioners role from the group called system authenticated OAuth group. So the next operation we're going to carry out is to restore project creation privileges to non-cluster admin user. And of course, to do that, you need to log in as the cluster admin user. So I'm just going to log in back as the technical user. Also log in you take need. This is password. All right, so to restore project creation privileges, we're going to use the command OCADM policy add cluster role to group self provisional system authenticated OAuth. So you can see that this role has been bound to the group. And if I do OC describe again, so let's say OC describe, you can see that I have this group being bound to this role. And also again, if I use this command as well, which is um, OC get cluster role binding. So you can see that we have the group system authenticated auth being bound again to the self-provisional rule and like i've told you that the self-provisional rule means that users are able to self-provision objects projects you know and so i'm going to log in back as the lisa as the lisa user and i'm going to try to create the project again So you can see now that we've been able to create the project now using, using project test project and that's because we've restored the privilege so the next operation we're going to carry out is to create a project as the cluster admin we will we'll create a project called test 2 pj then grant the user rob the project admin privilege on the test two project and because the user rob has been granted the admin privilege at project level the user rob will then grant the user mic with privilege on test two project then we will do our test so let's start by logging in as the as the cluster admin so i can say oc login user tech need password password so i've been able to log in right so the next thing i'm going to do is to create a new project as the cluster admin so i'm going to say oc new project i'm going to say test two project so that's test 2 pj so the project is still trying to create it's taking time to create all right so you can see that it's been created and you can see that it's saying that we are not using the test 2 pj project so this means that anything whatever thing we'll do we're going to be doing is going to be associated with this project either roles either creation of objects services whatever thing we're doing is going to be associated with this project so take that into notice now that we've been able to 
create this project, we will, we will then grant the user Rob the project admin privilege. So you should, you should take note, there's a difference between the cluster admin privilege, which is which has the role cluster admin, uh, and we have the project admin privilege, which has the role admin. So to do that, we're just going to say OC OC ADM policy. I think I have um, OC ADM policy. Let's just type. It's fine. Hard role to user admin. This is the project admin role. Then I'm going to be adding it to the user Rob. Rob not found. So let's see OC get users. I thought I have um the Rob user here. Oops, I don't have Rob user here. I'm going to quickly create um the user Rob and Mike. So you don't have to see this part. We've done this part, so I don't want to make the video long. When I'm done creating um the users, we're going to continue from where we stopped. Now I have the user Rob created, so I'm going to rerun this command again. So you can see that this role has been added to the user Rob. And like I said, everything that we're doing is associated to this project. So meaning that this role has been added to this user Rob to be able to be the administrator of this project, which is test two project. So now we can log in as the user rob so i can say oc login user rob password password so i've been able to log in as this user and you can see here that i'm saying that well this user is using project test to project that's test to pg so don't forget everything we're doing is associated on the project that we are currently on of course rob should be able to do you know stuff like oc get pod because it's the admin so you can see that we don't have resources oc get service is the project admin it's not the cluster admin it's the project admin so that's why you can do stuff on this project and now what we're going to do next is to log in so before we log in um what we need to do is to grant the user mike a read privilege on this project so because rob is the project admin he can then grant is an admin here on project level so he can grant mike to be able to read you know objects on this project and to do that um since we're logged in as rob so we can say oc adm policy Add role, add role to user. So the role is going to be a view role, and this is going to be Mike. So you can see that this role has been added to the user Mike. So then we can log in as the user Mike and do our test. So this is going to be Mike. It's trying to log us in. So we've been able to log in and then, of course, we are on this project. And we can do our test. So if I say OC get ports, we should be able to view, you know, object. But then if I say, um, let me create a port or deployment. I can say OC create deployment nginx image equals nginx image equals nginx. So you can see that we have the error which says failed to create deployment. This is forbidding user mic cannot create resource, right? So this user 
cannot create resource. And um, you know, you might be wondering that why did I use OC ADM policy? I mean, if you don't want to use OC ADM policy, you can also use OC policy to do this, right? Oh, sorry, we're locked in as the, the user mic already. Of course, we cannot even do anything as the user mic. So you can either use, use this. Um, this is used by non-admin um, users mostly, and this is used by the OCADM is used by admin users. So let's try one more thing before we round off with this lesson. I'm going to create um, another project with this um, mic. We're we'll logged in as mic users. So I'm going to create another project. So I'm going to say OC new project test 3 PJ. So we've, we have um, this user is not using test 3 PJ. And like I've always told you, you should always know the project that you're currently on right so i'm going to um i'm going to let mike give um, which work can we have now so i'm going to say oc adm policy okay let mike give um the the read role to rob on this project on this project on test three project so I'm going to, going to say enter. So that means that Rob, right, can only Rob we only we can only view um object on this project. So I'm going to log in as Rob. Let's see policy. Let's log in. Let's log in as Rob. So login successful. We have access to the following project. You can see there's two projects and test three projects. However, however, I'm reiterating this. However, we are currently on test three project. So that means if I tell Rob to create deployment, for example, you can see that Rob cannot create this resource because it does not have permission and it's saying that this is forbidden. So you understand how to create and manage permissions by now and would go over these cluster rules again, admin basic, basic user cluster admin. Uh, we've used this role, we've used this um, role We've used this, we've worked on this as well, and we've worked on this as well. So these are the um the default roles that comes with OpenShift. And also, if you're going to be writing the exam, I would encourage you to go over the exam practice questions. There are a lot of questions. I mean a lot of questions you can work on that you can practice and that and that will make your hand very very strong, right? So you can, you know, just practice a lot of questions. It's very good for you if you're going to be writing the exam. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson and bye for now. Ah, yeah, before I go, you can also apply this to um, groups as well. The same, we've, the same way we've, we've applied these rules to users, it can also be applied to group. Yeah, it's, we're going to look at how to do that in the exam practice questions. So thank you once more for watching and bye for now.